Hi, I'm Brad Davis, one of the authors of Oculus Rift in Action, and today I want to talk to you about Asynchronous Time Warp. Asynchronous Time Warp is a mechanism you can use right now to improve the experience of your VR game or application, even if you're having trouble hitting the required frame rates for the headset. If you don't know what basic time warp is or how it works, Everyday VR has a good description of it in his video, which I have linked in the comments. In his video, he discusses how time warp can be used to reduce the perceived latency and also used to improve frame rates. What he doesn't go into is how the improved frame rates can actually be achieved by application. Unlike the latency reduction, which works automatically simply by turning on the time warp flag, better frame rates don't work out of the box. The problem is that the SDK needs to have the begin and end frame functions called for every single frame that is to be time warped. Most current Rift applications probably have a rendering loop that looks something like this, where you call the begin frame method, then render each eye, and then call the end frame method. This is synchronous rendering, because all of the operations occur one after the other, always in the same order. But if your rendering code isn't fast enough, then you've got a problem. By the time you reach the end frame call, your time has already run out. The headset, having no new image to display, just continues displaying the previous frame, without time warping to account for any head movement. Instead of getting 75 frames per second, you're getting 37 frames per second, or even less, which is a terrible experience in VR. The solution is to break up the rendering and the SDK interaction into two separate threads so that they are asynchronous. Here, the draw loop thread is responsible for passing the most recently rendered images and poses to the SDK for distortion, time warp, and display on the Rift. This thread keeps in sync with the Rift refresh rate at all times. The render loop thread is responsible for producing new images, which are then consumed by the draw loop thread. If the render loop thread isn't keeping up with the refresh rate of the rift, the draw loop thread is free to use the most recently rendered image for a given eye and time warp it to the correct location. Let's take a look at how this works in practice. Here I have a simple scene, which includes a basic skybox, a floor, and a color cube, which is close enough in the foreground that I can use positional tracking to examine it on all sides. This scene is simple enough that it would never need asynchronous rendering. However, I've included a mechanism in the example to allow me to artificially increase the amount of time spent rendering each eye in order to simulate a more costly rendering pipeline. If I increase the delay to 16 milliseconds, each eye can now produce at most 62 frames per second meaning the total frame rate would be half that, 31 frames per second. If I were using synchronous rendering, the jitter would be pretty bad, as well as cover the whole scene. With asynchronous time warp, I can still perceive some jitter in the cube in the foreground, as well as in the rendered text, which is pinned to my viewpoint. The skybox and floor, however, feel as smooth as ever. Increasing the delay even more, to a ludicrous 64 milliseconds per eye, gives us an overall frame rate of less than 8 frames per second, and serves to highlight both the advantages and drawbacks of asynchronous time warp. Here, the cube and rendered text both look like poorly done stop-motion animation, and the edges of the most recently rendered frame co easily come into view as I turn my head around. Even the nearer portions of the floor exhibit a significant stutter as I move my head laterally. We see that the closer an object is, or more accurately, the greater the distance an object will seem to move as you turn or move your head, the more stutter it will suffer, even with asynchronous time warp. But because the overall background of the scene still updates smoothly, it's easier to interpret stuttering issues as a problem with the object that's stuttering, rather than a problem with the world or with your brain, and thus it's easier to maintain a sense of presence in the scene. Asynchronous time warp is an excellent tool for allowing your application to handle occasional drops in frame rate, or remain usable even on lower-end hardware, or if your rendering engine hasn't been fully optimized yet. How useful will depend largely on the design of your scene, and what kinds of frame rates you're able to achieve on a given set of hardware. Although the caveats still apply that every user experiences VR slightly differently and have their own tolerances to triggers for motion sickness, asynchronous time warp should still represent an improvement in the feel of just about any application, and at worst shouldn't impose any serious drawbacks if you are hitting the desired frame rate targets. The full source code for the example is available on GitHub, also linked in the comments. 
This topic will also be covered in Chapter 9 of our book, along with other techniques for improving the performance of your VR application. Thank you for watching.